a spine core dynamic corrective brace for the treatment of idiopathic scoliosis, designed to be used on curves from 15 to 50 degrees in children from the age of five years and upwards. The spine core brace allows incredible freedom of movement, giving the patient the opportunity to continue with their normal activities whilst pulling on their body to correct the scoliosis curve. Patients should be seen by an accredited spine core brace provider who will discuss the treatment prior to fitting the brace. Recent full spine PA and lateral x-rays will be examined. The information taken from the x-rays will be inputted into a computer program called SpineCore Assistant Software. In preparation for the clinical evaluation, the spinous processes are marked on the skin, starting from C7, and continuing down to the S1 spinous process. The posterior superior iliac spines, inferior angles of the scapulae and posterolateral aspects of the acromion processes are then marked. The clinical evaluation starts with analysis of the postural disorganization within the horizontal plane and the coronal plane. Next, the prominences are measured in the thoracic and lumbar spine using a scoliometer. The direction, magnitude and spinal level of the largest prominence is recorded. Then the global and regional coronal balance is measured using a laser line as the central sacral line. The distance from the T1 spinous process and the T12 spinous process to the laser line is recorded. As with the X-ray evaluation, all of the clinical information is then inputted into the spine core assistant software. Each classification of scoliosis has its own corrective movement, which is the position that the patient maintains when they're wearing the brace. The corrective movement is made up of a series of movements which will take the patient from their postural deformity into a position that is reversed. The patient is taught their corrective movement so that they can hold their position whilst being fitted with their brace. The brace is now fitted starting with the pelvic base, which is wrapped around the pelvis like a low belt. It is held in place by Velcro straps at the front and positioned so that the centre of the plastic oval is lined up with the navel in the midline of the body. It is then adjusted to the correct size by the laces at the back. Next, the crotch bands are added to the pelvic base. These bands hold the oval plastic flat against the body. The crotch band snaps onto the front. It is passed between the legs and then threaded through the buckle at the back. This band is not tight. It should be easy to move a finger underneath it. When both crotch bands have been added to the pelvic base, the excess material is removed. The thigh bands are then added by threading the end through a buckle, as with the crotch bands. They are wrapped around the thigh and held by Velcro. Next, the bolero is fitted. The bolero is a body contoured vest that wraps over the shoulders and around the bottom of the rib cage. Now the corrective bands are fitted. They are made of strong elastic and have two snaps at one end. Normally white in colour, they are shown in contrasting colours here so that they can be easily seen. To fix the corrective band to the bolero, a velcro crocodile clip is used. In this particular brace fitting, the first band is attached to the right thoracic flap of the bolero. The band is snagged onto the crocodile clip and then wrapped around the body to attach onto the pelvic base via the two snaps. The tension in this band is adjusted to achieve the desired postural change. This band is creating a rotation of the base of the thorax to the left in a counterclockwise direction. The excess band is then removed and the crocodile velcro clip is closed.
The second corrective band has already been connected to the crocodile clip. In this fitting, it is attached to the left thoracic flap and has less tension than the first band, so that the patient's thorax remains in a counterclockwise rotation. The third corrective band attaches to the left shoulder flap, goes diagonally across the chest, around the back, across the left waist crease and snaps onto the pelvic base at the front. This creates a right or clockwise shoulder rotation and a left lateral flexion at T12. The fourth and final corrective band attaches to the right shoulder flap. It goes under the right arm, across the back and snaps onto the back of the pelvic base on the left. This will create a right or clockwise shoulder rotation and a clockwise shoulder tilt. A comfort band is added to the brace in this fitting to hold the left shoulder flap in place. The brace is almost complete. The final step is to label the brace so that it is easy for the patient to reapply it themselves. A Velcro number is used at the upper end of each corrective band. This indicates that this is band number one. A second number one is put underneath the band to indicate where it attaches to the bolero. A third number one is put on the lower end of the band. This process is repeated for each of the four corrective bands. Next, a corresponding sticker is used to indicate the location and direction of the snaps used to connect each band to the pelvic base. A quick check to make sure that the patient can move freely completes the brace fitting. The patient will have an in-brace x-ray taken immediately to ensure that the spine is in an optimal position. This PA X-ray shows a Cobb angle reduction of 6 degrees in the thoracic curve and 5 degrees in the lumbar curve. Each patient will be provided with information about the wearing protocol and instructions about removing and fitting the brace. If you would like any further information about the Spine Core Dynamic Corrective Brace, please email info at spinecorporation.com.